Hey y'all, it's VDC. Thanks for stopping by. Today we're doing more Imperion Galactic Survival. And in this video, I'm going to show y'all probably <laughs> probably one of the dumbest things I've ever made in this game. Um, well, no, actually there's something else that's dumber than this that has, a, has an even worse name. But um, anyway, uh, this thing is called the Budget Refining Node. And um, for those of y'all that, uh, that follow me here um, and uh, on my uh, Steam Workshop with uh, all my Imperion stuff I've got up there, um, Y'all know that um, I'm really, really heavy on the very, very early survival aspects of the game. Um, I uh, I have a particular love for playing on servers that, or uh, starting worlds or whatever, that are very, very high difficulty. And I really, really like the uh, challenge of the early survival experience before you get built up and you have you know a bunch of ships and bases and stuff like that where things start to get a little easier. So a lot of the stuff that I've uh, built caters, um, not all of it, but a lot of it that I've built caters to the, uh, to the very early survival experience. And one of the things I like to do is um, do things that help with um, the very earliest stages of production, um, player support, prior to actually getting a base built. So this thing here that I put together, um, this budget refining note is kind of an example of that. So what I do is um, I play on the use of multiple portable constructors, uh, constructors, and in a lot of the uh, things I've produced, a lot of the bases I've produced, uh, even some of the larger production facilities, um, I do this. I will leave a section of the terrain, if it's a subterranean base, or an entire bottom floor or something like that where it's flattened out that you use to place your deployables, um, in particular these portable constructors, and those things are used as your production means, energy free by the way. So uh, basically what this is about is this is a, a cheap and clean, easy way of being able to put your deployables all in one spot um, that also uh, facilitates um, storage. So. Like, let's say if you're very, very early starting on and you've got a couple of these portable constructors and you've got them sitting in the, the middle of a field is usually what the start is like. I mean, I'm talking like the first 10, 15 minutes of gameplay type thing. Um, and you want to uh, um, have a way of doing some kind of a storage, some kind of very, very early stage organization, then this is one solution for you. So, um, let's see, to pop it up over here, um, I have to wait for this thing to load because I neglected to uh, do this before I popped this video up. Anyway, um, let's see here. To throw this thing down, uh, it's partially subterranean, so it's pretty simple. Uh, the lines that are on the sides of it, the white lines, indicate the burial lines. Now, if you look at the center section over here that shows the marked area, that's meant to be a terrain area. Um, the portable constructors, the water O2 condensers, those kinds of things like that, they can't go into a, um, um, anything that's not terrain. So when you go to deploy this thing, ideally you'd be using a drone to do this and not in god mode. Um, you throw it halfway into the ground, <clears throat> excuse me, and then you have your spot right here for your constructors. Um, a couple of other things I wanted to uh, point out on this. Uh, you notice the two solar panels. It's got a little row of lights on it. We have the two storage boxes. Now, I have them labeled with um, LCDs, but you can label them however the heck you want. You can change it up and, and do whatever. It's just, it's meant to, uh, what I was trying to target here is getting all of the crap that normally sits inside of your portable constructors during your first whatever hour of, or maybe even two or however long it is of gameplay um, into some semblance of storage, putting it into storage box, um, and then freeing up the space in the portable constructor, make it less um, less confusing, less uh, cluttered, that kind of thing like that. Um, the other thing that I did with this was um, I went ahead and put a few O2 tanks into it. and go look here real quick. It looks like I have three, um, and I've got an O2 station. So if you start out on, say, a, uh, depending upon the scenario that you're playing, if you start out, say, on a non-temperate, a non-jungle, um, like a, one of the harder difficulties with a non-breathable atmosphere, a uh, desert planet, you know, that kind of thing like that, then you have a way of being able to re-up your, uh, your player um, suit oxygen. So um, it's, a, it's a pretty 
humble amount, you know, of, uh, of oxygen storage that's in it. Now, let me go back here. 3,000 total capacity. It's three smaller two tanks. It's nothing to write home about, um, but it's something. It's better than nothing. And then one uh, tank uh, for uh, one fuel tank with uh, 1,200 capacity. Uh, as far as build cost, it's pretty cheap. A um, little over a couple hundred stone dust. That's very easy to get. Uh, 30 iron ingot, 66 silicone uh, ingot, 64 copper ingot, and then 14 carbon substrate. So this is stuff that, um, or this little structure here, this is stuff that you could get um, probably by using the survival tool to dig a stone pit somewhere, or if you start on a uh, harsh world um, that has a bunch of the uh, stone rocks all over the surface, then um, it wouldn't take you long to be able to build something like this. So again, this is a very, very early starting um, type thing. This is before you actually put any kind of a base down, even if it's a starter base. It's meant to be one of the very, very first steps. Um, and it's uh, intended to facilitate that step up before you do get a base. Um, a lot of the times you'll wind up having portable constructors or your deployables kind of scattered about and maybe, um, I don't know, a little goofy, you know, hover bike or whatever. You can't leave them out there though. Um, but um, something like that, the motorbike is what I meant, not the hover bike, not the hover vessels. Um, and then you make the jump up to a, uh, a significantly sized base. So you're collecting all this crap, collecting all this crap, you know, getting a bunch of metals, a bunch of metals and the constructors are full. This is meant to be kind of that in between step before you get to that base thing. So this would eventually be torn down if, if it wouldn't be used for a um, um, uh, an outside O2 thing. If say you have the base, you know, main base sitting right here, then somebody's out on foot doing something, they can come over here and re-up their suit oxygen, uh, or um, possibly be left as a uh, place to leave all the constructors if the base you're building doesn't have um, a means of being able to place all those in there in an organized fashion. So. Anywho, um, yeah, I whipped this up, uh, I don't know, it's been several months ago, and then I just uh, cleaned it up and uh, updated it and put it up on the Steam Workshop. I figured, you know, why not? Somebody might might use this. Um, I don't know if I will or not. I might, actually, um, in a uh, survival game, but um, yeah, so there you go. <laughs> the budget refining node is not really uh, much to write home about, um, but it's something, and it, I mean, it's a, it's a starting little area. You know, you don't have all the frills or anything like that. I guess you could probably add to it. But anywho, um, that's it. Uh, I hope uh, hope you guys liked it. Comments and questions always down below. And I will do my best to answer every one of them. And like and sub if you would, please. And I'll see you guys in the next video.